Welcome to Talking Beards, an entertainment news podcast all about the facial hair lifestyle and the people who use their beards and mustaches to help change the world. Join your hosts, World Goatee Champion Aaron D. Johnston and two-time National Goatee Champion Scott Sakura as they talk about all the important issues in the community from charity events, competition news, styling tips, breaking news, and much more. Tune in every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern as we stream live on all social media platforms as well as TalkingBeards.com and answer all of your questions. Join in our chat room and be a part of the show each week as we give away great prizes, compliments of Honest Amish. I am your host, Aaron D. Johnston, and I am Scott Sakura, and we are Talking Beards. Welcome, everybody, for Talking Beards. Uh, tonight is episode number 208 of the live show, 286 of the podcast. And, uh, yeah, we have breaking news from the legendary Taxi Phil himself. And we have uh, Ron Wallach on the show to talk all about the Hank Wallach uh, Beard and Mustache Contest. It's going to be happening up there in uh, Syracuse, New York on April 8th. And so we're going to find out all about that contest. So this is a full night of uh episode pretty much so yeah i'm Andy johnson go ahead scott and i'm scott Sakura. i hope you guys all enjoyed that fun little intro that ai did for us uh we've been having a lot of fun with that so uh i wanted to have a fun little story to start the show off with uh two our two awesome guests tonight um both guys are really involved in their communities and really have done amazing things for their communities over the years and um, we just, and we think I brought them together. AI brought them together into a fun <laughs> story. Apparently Phil, you live in Syracuse now. So, well, yeah, well, you know, Phil and, and Ron, you know, up there in Syracuse, just doing their thing, yeah. just, you know, eating ice cream together and, you know, hanging out. Yeah. So, but, uh, we want to thank everyone for joining the show tonight. You can check out the show live over at talkingbeards.com. Uh, you can also check out some other cool stuff there. I updated the site yesterday. I actually stripped away a lot of stuff. So now it's like it's a real naked yeah naked totally naked Naked. uh but if you want to interact with the show just like everyone these you see these uh comments popping up there on the screen like this uh, one like aaron and scott have matching shirts tonight and okay you ready ready? one this was this is breaking news one two three yellow shorts yellow shorts (laughs) (laughs) you peed your pants probably (laughs) we're matching (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but if you want to participate in the chat on the show, you can either go to our Facebook page or to our YouTube page. If you'd like, you can go to Twitch and or Twitter, but we don't really. You can. There. You can. You can though. go hang out on Twitch and Twitter all you want and comment, and the comments will show up. And yeah, it'll be will. amazing because no sh- one's yeah, ever over there. They'll show up uh, in here, but yeah, and we'll bring them up if you do comment from there. But uh, we want to uh, thank everyone, like I said, for tuning in. And we want to thank Honest Anish for uh, helping us with our show. Um, Always remember to go over to HonestAmish.com if you're looking for some new beard products and or soaps. Uh, They have wonderful soaps. But make sure you use the promo code TALKINGBEARDS and you'll get 15% off your order. And if you order $35 or more, you will get free shipping domestically. Yes, inside the continental United States. And we we will not ship to Australia for for free. No. And everyone, make sure they always go over to thebeardcalendar.com for the most up-to-date listing of beard competitions that are going on worldwide. Yes, that is right. Worldwide, we have a lot of competitions on there from overseas. And in fact, we just did an episode a couple weeks ago uh, for the March Beard Calendar. And there's already been an addition of three more competitions that are going to be happening not in Ohio and two more in Texas within the next few weeks. Yeah, so so the two Texas ones are this upcoming weekend, right? In, Uh, In Waco and Dallas? Yep. Yeah, so there you go. So those those are coming up. I know uh, Central Texas is involved with the one in Waco, and I'm not quite sure who's even putting on the one in Dallas, but it's on the beard calendar, and there's information, so you can go find it and go check it out. Yeah, so, uh, but, I mean, like we, like you were saying uh, at the beginning of the show, um, we have a lot of information tonight, and uh, should, I mean, to, it, you're, you're down in Florida currently, correct? 
I am. Yeah, we're, um, we we uh, we came down to Orlando. We met with Ron earlier today, and and we just did some overall, you know, running around. You know, we haven't been down here in a couple months, and you know, these Disney discount stores may have new things that Natalie needs. So we need to make sure that w- we stay up to date, and and she she gets all the ears and and things for her uh, her museum pieces around the house. So we we have so to she, make sure she stays updated, so she can make her talk tick videos. Oh my gosh. Yeah. She, uh, was it that she doesn't live in a museum? Yeah. That was, uh, yeah. it's pretty fun. Like we've got a lot of crap in our house. So might as well show it off on TikTok. Breaking news. What? I finally got my Panda Bread shirt yesterday. Did you get yours? I, I don't know. It's, it, I don't have it now currently, mm-hmm. but, but we haven't been home yet. So maybe, maybe we got it now, but good thing I paid that extra $5 to uh, have it direct shipped before the you matter contest, but it just didn't, it didn't know what year. So hey, I'll probably get it before next year's you matter. Probably maybe. And then my new coffee cup compliments of our friends from big love. Nice. That's, That's awesome. Neat. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Look who's here. Who's here. Santa Keith. And we got Ray Norcross. We got, we got Judy. Judy Goble. My gosh. Barefoot brains is here. Yeah, we got we got a packed house tonight. So since we have so many people, since it's are, so packed, yeah. So since it's so packed, let's uh, let's bring on our first guest so we can uh, get get the party rolling so the people can get the information that they are here for. Aaron, that's right, Scott Secor. We have some breaking news from Taxi Phil. He's going to come in tonight and uh, break some news down about the Big Whisker revival. We ready to do this? I think we are. The one and only Taxi Phil. What's up, gentlemen? Good to see the Bopsy twins tonight. You we're like here. That? We're we're Bopsying. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're more like the Hardy Boys. <laughs> you can't yeah. like tell you apart. You look so much alike with your matching clothes. We, you know, it, it just happened. It was a complete accident. It wasn't even planned at all. And Jim Jones probably said the smartest thing I think I've ever heard him say. Blah 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 blah. blah. That's about all he knows how to say, really. That's about it. About this time of day, that's pretty much all he's gonna get out. Of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he's on blah blah mode right that, now. That was a great intro there. Uh, me and Ron, we went to different schools together. Wow, right? yeah, that's yeah. what I was thinking up there yeah. in uh, right outside of Syracuse, maybe. Yeah, that's what I was up there living up in the Northlands. All right, well, so I mean, we we have Ray lovely. Ray Norcross is here. He says, "Hey, taxi." So you were on uh, Ray's show this past week, correct? It's been a couple of weeks ago. I was on them with them all guys. Right. Yeah, I've watched I watched the replay, so I, okay. I just saw that you were on. You were, you were making the rounds. We recorded that, so. Oh, wow. Yeah, but I was but down you, there with him, so we just went ahead and recorded it down there. But you graced us with a live performance. Oh, hell you just, yeah. You, you give Ray Norcross the, the, the pre-taped stuff. That's <laughs> But the, yeah. the live stuff stays for us, and we oh, appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, you that. guys are special. Yeah, well, you yeah. hear that, Ray? We're special. That's right. <laughs> We Andrew loves some taxi. I, that, I mean, he must be talking about the TV show. Yes, sir. Were, were you on that show, Taxi? I was, yeah, I, I was. I was uh, one of the dispatchers there for that. I, I knew it. I could <laughs> tell. He's good friends with Tony Danza. Elton actually, John I, actually, I'm more friends. What the hell was the little short dude's name? Uh, uh, Danny <sighs> DeVito. Yeah, yeah. You kind of look like Danny DeVito. Yeah, we <laughs> we hang out a lot. <laughs> you we're we're all tell. drinking buddies. <laughs> no doubt you two are special. Thank you. We, we Taxi Phil. So uh you you uh you came on the show tonight because you got some big, huge, enormous breaking news about I, the big I whisper think it's revival. Big. I think it's a big I think it's a pretty big idea here. Yeah. Um, we've been asked to do this for many years and we didn't really have the facility. She wasn't really willing to, but now that she knows us better. Um, this year, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be family friendly. Oh. We're even going to have a kids category. No. Look at that. Yep. Yeah. We haven't added it on there yet. I'm breaking it to you first. Well, we appreciate it. That's, yeah. that's so, you. Yeah, we're so going to add another category. We have a kids category. Um, and that way also some of the, uh, um, older, younger girls or ladies, I should say, can come and participate and they can, and they can go up in the, up in the, up in the class, up with the, West Carinas and stuff. So what's there. the what's the the age divide between? Well, the two we're going to discuss that more at our meeting on Sunday. I'm looking okay. like 13 or 14. 
um, you know, they can go up. Now it's still going to be gender specific. Whisker readers, you got to be women. Okay. You know? um, we're going to stick it with that. Um, the older boys, most of them, by the time they get up there, they really don't want to compete anymore with the kids, you know? And personally, I think by the time you're 13 or 14, you should have a beard. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that makes sense. I mean, I'm sure you had a, a full mustache by the time you're 13, 14. So about 15 or 16. Yeah, it looked exactly like yeah. this, bright white and everything. Oh, yeah, this person just exactly like this. <laughs> and, uh, I actually did have a full beard. Back then, you could buy beer when you were 18. Um, So I had to buy everybody's beer for them because I looked like this back then. I was bald, already bald just about, and I had a big old beard, and I didn't drink beer. You know, that's why I always had to drive because I didn't drink at the time. I did drugs. I didn't drink. But it was right, okay yeah, to do smart. a quaalude and drive. Here, do these two quaaludes and go drive. Bring it idea. Yeah, but you're not drunk. Oh, I wasn't drunk, you know. <laughs> you know here, you, you hit a blotter and go drive. Okay, shit, why not? <laughs> you know, but, yeah, I think that's I think that's a pretty big thing for us. Yeah, you know, that's cool. um, We've had it requested for quite a, some time now. Um, we finally I got with the Southgate house and we now have the entire building. Okay. The last couple of years before that we shared it upstairs. They would have a show up there or something. Um, now we use that for the green room so I can get ready and stuff, but this way, you know, we're going to be ready. And the thing is, you know, they're going to have to be distinguished differently for the kids. So I'm thinking about having a tattoo artist come in and tattoo it on their head. Tattoo you know, the kids. Age. That's smart. Yeah, on their age, on their head. You know? yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah, Scott will will volunteer to do that. He loves okay. tattooing All right. kids. All right. It won't wash off. That's the nice part. Yeah, yeah, there you go. There you go. But yeah, I got to I just want to thank you guys for letting me come on and tell everybody that. And uh, if you've been there before, we've gone back to the barrels. Our okay. first place prize. The last couple of years, we did the barrel lids. Ooh. This time, we're going back to the big old whiskey barrel like we used to have. Um, everybody really liked those a lot. Um, we were having problems. When we came back from the plague, it was really hard to go ask people for money because right. all the bars and have been closed for all that time, you know, so they kind of cut back a little bit. And then they got a really good sponsor come in. It's a newer sponsor. They don't do very many shows. I, I believe the name of it is Honest Amish. Okay. Um, they, they're kind of new. Must, must be know, new, yeah. Yeah, in yeah, the bearding community and stuff. And we're in cahoots with them guys again this year. That's nice. And Those guys like being in cahoots with you. They right? do. They do. Yeah. You know, they cool. like dressing alike. You know, yeah. So they find that very important. You know? It is very important. You oh, know? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. So everything else is great down here in Cincinnati. They got a little snow today. Did you, how um, much snow did you get? For us, it was a Texas snow. Like about, a, 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 we couldn't even see it on the ground hardly. Oh, so everyone like acted like the world ended? We Texas do that snow? here, just exactly. Um, Cincinnati is <laughs> pretty bad. We've closed schools because it might snow, All right. and then the next day it'd be like eighty degrees. You know, it's one of them great jobs a weather person is. It's the only job you can be wrong half the time and still keep your job. Yeah, right. That's uh, you don't have to be right ever to be no. a meteorologist. No, just no, no, no. You know, I saw a deal the other day on Facebook. It said uh, it was a Texas deal. It says uh, today's weather, possible snow anywhere from one inch to six feet. You know, temperature is going to be from minus 10 to maybe 90. So it was kind of, it was pretty damn funny. That sounds about right. Cause it's yeah. actually been like, we've had a few days last week that were like in the upper eighties. And then like this week, it's only supposed to get into the like high in the low fifties. Yeah. So. I was, I was supposed to go to Florida this week for one of my jobs. I drive a guy down there every year. And uh, I kept looking at the weather. Then he called the other day, and his grandson broke his leg, so he couldn't fly. Hmm. And so I'm like, okay, so we canceled it. That don't make me mad, you know, because now we want to go in June. That's, I, I can deal with Florida in June, you know, down there in Jacksonville. It's a pretty nice time. So now you have uh, Ron coming on with the, the Polish. Yeah, so uh, his his I believe it was his grandfather was you know putting on a contest up there in uh, Syracuse, New York, at the Polish home, and uh, yeah, they they're going to do another contest there to help raise money to uh, help renovate the place a little bit. So they yeah, go. Help, so a little back to it. 
Yeah, a little bit about that is uh, their event's going to be a fundraiser to support the Polish Home, which was established in 1919 as a cultural gathering place for Polish immigrants. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, my family's Polish, so, you know, we grew up. You're from Cleveland. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> hello. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, no, I'm I'm very familiar with the the Polish culture, and you know, I I was telling a story the other day about how they they there's a polka museum in uh, Euclid, Ohio, and we went to it one night to check out some polka bands and stuff. It was really cool, and in the basement they have like a museum, but at the same time you can they have like a bar there, and then they serve food, and we got like pork pork chop sandwiches which was really funny because it's like a deep or a breaded and fried pork chop, you know, like a a traditional, but it was bone in pork chop sandwich. (laughs) And I'm like, and it's like, you get that big T bone in there and it's like, Oh, how fun. And many years ago we was down in in Memphis working the carnival and they had these build up barbecue stands all around the fairgrounds. And I went and got a pork chop, I mean, I got a rib sandwich. It's just a slab of ribs on two pieces of bread. Yeah, you don't realize. Take a big old bite, and you know you lose half your teeth because all the bones are still in there. But here, you see, since you're, I'll give you a fun fact here. There's one of the few words in the English language. If you change the first letter to make it capital instead of case, it changes the word and the definition. What is that word? Race car. Ah, wrong. Mm. No, you change it just the first letter. It's a single word. Polish and Polish. Oh, yeah. Huh. See? There's a Polish fun fact of the day. There you go. Well, thank you, Taxi Phil. Well, speaking of fun facts, Phil, since we have you here, let's go. Let's give give us the rundown of the competition um, so people can know a little bit okay. more about you what's going it. on. Other than we, just that you're adding a kid's category. Right. So. We have the basic 14 categories. Now I have the kids is the 15th. It's $20 to get in the door. Um, that gets you in your first category. You can do as many categories as you like. It's $5 per extra category. The record is eight categories. Oof. Right, that's been done three times. So, and <laughs> yeah, it's a great time. We have. You, you did uh, once. What which competition was that? Were you Bearded did, Hero. Bearded Hero. How many yeah, did categories nine. did you do for that? You did nine? Yeah, I did nine. Yeah, that's, that's coming up next weekend. Mm-hmm. In two weeks. Yeah. Two um. Weeks. But in the in the main room, we start out with James Funk. He plays the, him and his uh, wife perform the music for us. It's uh, Moonshine and Wine, and they do a great job. The acoustical music very entertaining. And then we start the show, and then also in the other room we will have guitars for vets in there again this year. And it's a it's a PSD program to get these guys through therapy and stuff. They teach them to play the guitar, and they play the blues. They're in there all night long playing. They do a good job there. You know, we have a very small raffle table. We usually average about 120 items. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, the, probably, probably one of the smallest raffle yeah. tables around, really. It's the, this, this club is amazing. They all come together out and work so hard and put everything together. It's a, it's a big group effort. You know, not anybody does this by themselves. It's impossible to do it by themselves. And these guys rock, man. I got We got really lucky with all the memberships that we have. Um, we do a lot of other things throughout the city, throughout the year. We have the opening day parade coming up. Anybody in the general area, we like to come and join us. Open day parade is April thirtieth. Um, we have an event page on Facebook. We love to have you guys come out and join us. That's it's for the Reds, time. correct? That's a Reds opening day parade. Right. Okay. Um, but back to the competition is uh, we work with the Barracks Project. This will be like our seventh or eighth year with the Barracks Project, and but they try, their goal is is to get veterans before they hit the streets. And help them get acclimated back to civilian life and get them jobs and stuff like that. They've had a few houses donated to them. They've rehabbed these houses and they'll put families up in the houses until they can get on their feet and get going again and stuff. Free of rent, free electric, everything. Uh, utilities. They do a good job with that. Um, we go help them a couple different times out of the year. We got a couple of guys that cut grasses for the houses. You know, we got they they go out there with the lawnmowers, cut the grass and stuff. Um yeah, before it was a 21 and over, but it ain't no more. You know, bring the family, bring your friends, bring your friends' as family. Hell, bring people you don't even like. We don't care. Yeah, just bring everybody. Yeah, so, bring them all. Everybody's invited, yeah. you know. 
One of these days, Scott's going to show up. I think he ain't been there for a few years. Yeah. yeah he'll, one day. One day, Scott. Yeah. You can. I it. it's it, it is I it is probably on the top of my list of comps that I've wanted to go to that it always just happened to be on the same week as, as something that was going on with my family and uh, so everybody we, that that's watching if you're if you can hear us apparently the Talk of Beards Facebook page has crashed or is frozen but you can go to the talking beards youtube or you can go to aaron d johnston facebook if you're still on facebook or the ensemble facebook that should work so something happened with talk beards facebook yeah, I, I probably broke it that's what uh, that's what everybody's saying yeah jim yeah, jones so not, definitely blamed it on you texas oh yeah so. I don't, okay I, I, I don't blame you you know yeah. but we've, we've got our five judges we haven't announced those yet um they're pretty strong judges man I'm sure we'll have you on a, a couple weeks before your event. I hope we'll, so. I we'll hope let so. you announce it. Obviously, you'll do do hours live, and then you'll tape Ray Norcross's show. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, for sure. I'll tape so. theirs. I'll, I'll tape them other guys on Sundays, you know. <laughs> um, but but, yeah, but you ours is live. On. Perfect. Anyway, thank you. Well, Taxi Phil, thank you very much, and uh, enjoy your night. And, thank uh, you. Yeah, we'll talk to you soon. I'll be here. I ain't got no All place right, else to go. All right, buddy. All right, later, man. See you, Phil. All right. That was Taxi Phil. That was Taxi Phil. And I have a question for you, Aaron. I have an answer. So we kind of had this little discussion yesterday on the phone about jellyfish. Right. Yeah. That's very important. Yeah. We we were talking about jellyfishing. Fear a figure like this moment is like the perfect moment to talk about jellyfish. (sighs) You know, I really do. I feel like this is probably the best possible time that we could talk about this. So Word on the street is is if you're in the water and you get stung by a jellyfish, uh-huh. it is excruciatingly painful, but you're supposed to pee on the sting. You can pee it, on the sting, and yeah. it fixes it. So what happens? Why not just pee on the jellyfish before it stings you? You know, that's something that people don't usually think about. No. And we talked about this, and I think we came up with a very solid answer Absolutely, what would happen if you peed on a jellyfish? It wouldn't. And it would just neutralize it, and then yeah. it wouldn't be able to shock you. Yeah, that's what and I Nat- think. Natalie wanted to fight us on this thing. No, so Natalie we're, was we're like, talking. "That is an uh, urban legend or a a, a myth." She, she's still or, going. She's still she, going. Yeah, at she's it. pissed. She was saying that we could talk about this on bantering beards tomorrow. <laughs> that's what she just said. She said, "This sounds like a really good bantering beards topic." So. Um, on this on the same channel tomorrow, there's a show called Banter and Beards, and uh, yeah, come check it out at eight o'clock Eastern time. And uh, yeah, we banter about things like that. Like, <clears throat> can you pee on a jelly? There you go. So there there is a little taste of what bantering beards is about. So if you guys aren't doing anything tomorrow night, just tune in to Talking Beards, and uh, you can watch us. We'll, we'll probably both be over there. Probably, and then we will f- finish the topic and see what Corey thinks. It, what will yeah. happen if you pee on a jellyfish? He may so, have a different answer. As everyone is sitting here watching, going, "Wow, these two guys just totally derailed everything." No, there was a method to our madness. There, there we was. were trying to promote another show that we do over on the Talking Beards Network. So Gosh, it was so good. That was Ta-da. probably the most professional. Do you like that? Ta-da ever. Look at he misses your face, mofo. Gosh, she does. All right, let's get in this, Scott Score. Are you ready? Oh, let's get this party going, Aaron. Oh, my gosh, I clicked it. You can All do right. it. I did it. All right, so tonight we have the world-famous Ron Wallach as he presents the Hank Wallach's 70th Beard and Mustache Contest that will be benefiting the Syracuse Polish Home April 8th in Syracuse, New York. And uh, yeah, we're going to find out what all this contest is about tonight. What's up, the two Rons? Hey. hey. How are y'all doing? Good. You Your know, hair looks great tonight. We just wanted to let you, you know. I was <laughs> oh, you're talking about oh, my, my hair. Well, that's, <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. going to say, we what can't happened? see the tops of your head. <laughs> what happened to your bandana? Well, you know, it just, uh, well, I could. I could wear it, but it just wasn't falling <laughs> on my big head correctly. See, you look, don't have to. Wear now it. I just look like I'm wearing half a helmet. Basically, yeah. It looked better. There you go. That looks it's, way better. Way better. I, I think somebody was wearing my bandana. So now it's molded to somebody else's head. Hmm. Wow. Who would that be? 
I don't Freaking know. Scott. I'm sorry. I should have, and I should have washed it and pressed yeah, it. Yeah, you should have. You should have with your big hands. <laughs> I, I did out see runs. a. I did see a trail of uh, uh, what's that stingray juice on the floor there? Jelly Pete? jellyfish was running through our office you know i had never heard, heard that before and the jellyfishes are a big problem here in florida yeah florida just, just, pee, a, just pee on them that's yeah. it I, I, there's a lot of pests in florida i'd like to pee on and see if it works <laughs> i but i i want to say that it was an episode of baywatch that i saw and this is years and years ago where someone got stung by a jellyfish and that's what they talked about it was either baywatch or some other dumb movie and they were talking about it, and I was like, "Huh?" And I looked it up, and well, they watched was on television Tuesday. for about ten years, so they must have known what they were doing, saving lives on the beach. Must so, have. Must. I mean, have. that's that's the best place to get your news and information is from Baywatch. Really. <laughs> well, you can't. Yeah. People can't breathe underwater, Aaron. <laughs> well, maybe they can. Speaking of breathing underwater, Scott Sakura. It's the ammonia that neutralizes the sting, Aaron. Of course. <laughs> Everybody knows that. Speaking of ammonia and stings, there's a beard contest happening on April 8th in Syracuse, New York. Are you Look serious, that. Yeah. Clark? That was, that was beautiful. That was probably the best one I've ever done. It ever. was. My gosh, that was so good. I'm proud of me, really. So, uh... So, Ron, tell us tell us all about uh, Hank Wallach and how this how this whole thing got started up there in Syracuse. So let's just, as Scott would say, let's go back to the beginning. Let's, yeah, let's. We we want to hear the origin story of where this all comes from. Well, in 1953, my grandfather was an all star athlete in Syracuse, New York. He was part of a lot of stuff, wasn't he? In the original Orange Bowl or Citrus Bowl. Yes. Syracuse got to play Miami in uh, the Citrus Bowl, and I believe the Syracuse won, right? Miami yeah. doesn't get to win a lot of football games in the no. history of Miami. They just it's get hurricanes. Bad. That's yes. stupid. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. That was it? good. That was really good. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Yeah. So, but he uh, sponsored a lot of um, athlete, athletes and sports uh, teams through his uh, cafe, the Hanks Cafe in downtown Syracuse. And one of it, the things he did was a beard, uh, a mustache growing contest in 1953. They got so famous it made the newspaper in the Syracuse Post Standard. So the anniversary of that is here on October, I I'm sorry, April 8th, 2023 is the 70th anniversary of this historic uh, contest. Now, part of the deal back then was you grew a mustache uh, during Lent, and then if you shaved it off and you were a good member and paid your dues every week, you got a clam bake the following Saturday. So that's why we're holding it on April 8th. This has to do with that in the Bullish tradition and of growing badass mustaches for a month. Yeah. Clam bake. Isn't that not out of season? Well, they, would, they, they waited until the season was there, but they had the free clam bake. Uh, it wasn't in April, no. Oh, okay. Because I'm like, clams are not usually a springtime delicacy. No. So what, they, they got like a coupon to come back for the clam bake? Yeah, what he did was, uh, my father had a uh, a bar, a restaurant, or a cafe, and it was called the Sportsman's Cafe, and that's where the, the, uh, the contest came out of. And on the side of the building was a huge parking lot, and that's where you would have the clam bake there. So it would be in the summertime. There's actually a picture of it in the uh, press kit on mustacheparlor.com. If there you, you want to take a look at it, I emailed it to you a little earlier. Of is this clam of bake pictures? right there on the right hand, uh, bottom right, right hand corner. side. That big there it bucket is. of Sportsman uh, Cafe. Somehow they got a big bucket of clams in April. Wow, that's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> but that's uh, the type of man my grandfather was. He was always out doing cool shit, just like me. And, uh, he found a way to get a bucket of clams for all the people who are good mustache growers in April. Man, we could not in Cleveland get clams in Cleveland till September. <laughs> no matter how hard we try. Well, those were probably the same clams. They got them in September, but then they just like hung out until April and then they cooked them. <laughs> well, everybody knows clams stay on their, they don't go bad. A according to that article, there was also acid rain from Las Vegas that visited Syracuse that week. Perhaps that had to do with shocking the clams out of their beds and into the pot. 
I have a question. Mm-hmm. What happened to acid rain? Did it just go away? I think we stopped testing nuclear weapons. Maybe that's why. Oh, okay. That was good thinking. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> that happened a lot in the 50s, too. Yeah. I that's mean, a good question. I would imagine it would still be there. Mm-mm. They don't talk about it anymore. It doesn't exist. And- we, with all of, the climate change going on right now, I mean, you would think acid rain would be like top of the list, but it's not even on the list. I don't really? think anymore. It, nope. m- maybe it's what melted the snow. We were trying to get things organized uh, today. Unfortunately, Syracuse got hit with a giant blizzard record setting from what uh, people are telling me. They closed schools down throughout the state. Um. See, I keep forgetting that you're in Florida, not Syracuse. So Yeah, he's he's in Florida. Shut up, Aaron. That's what I just said. New York. <laughs> Come on, Scott. <laughs> yeah. Even Alan Alan D. Eckert knows this. Coal scrubbers. Coal scrub. What is that? Exactly, Scott. Exactly. I mean, I know it's like the steel belt area, and like it's the same. It's the same thing. It all goes back to the the you know the things you pee on in the ocean. Coal yeah. scrubbers. That's what Alan calls them. I'm trying to test out all the uh, different links because it seems like we're having some issues with the online it does, stuff. It, right yeah, now. it does seem like it. So here it is. Andrew answered it. Acid rain disappeared April twenty first, twenty sixteen, with the purple rain and prints. I remember that Super Bowl when it happened. That's it. That and it also the, happened in Miami. That was it. That was the last acid rain. And Prince Prince destroyed exactly. acid he, rain. He did, he did not stop playing either. He played the entire concert with. Without um, with acid with rain, rain on, on acid on rain on the stage the whole time, acid rain everywhere, and then after that it just gave up and it left. <laughs> I had an opportunity to see his last concert. I didn't know it was going to be his last concert, so I went to bed instead. I really regret that. I was working yeah. in Atlanta at the time, and I knew something was going on because um, all of a sudden uh, I was working at the Fox Theater. All of a sudden, Prince got added to the schedule, like a week or two before that. And he passed away like a couple of days after. So, um, and the whole show was just him on the piano. Very like, um, you know, what do they say? Um, not, what's the word I'm looking for? Very, uh, uh, very personal experience okay. from the audience. Yeah, it was, uh, it was definitely, definitely one that, that passed away too soon for sure. Mm-hmm. So, which uh, now back to our cause. Yeah. So uh, we were we found out that this was the 70th anniversary. So I had uh, through our friend uh, Christine Hackman and contacted uh, um, our buddy Aaron here and said about this idea and that the Syracuse Polish home needed a, a roof. So the Syracuse Polish home is a cultural center for immigrants that came to Syracuse in the turn of the century. It still exists and is open to membership to anybody. And they've got a historic 100-year-old building, which is a badass place to put on a beard mustache contest. So the member, the people who compete to come to the contest will be in a banquet hall. And during the awards ceremony, we're going to have a banquet that's going to be a Polish buffet. And there's a Ooh. secret bar downstairs for Polish uh, members. And there's also a going to be a competitor's lounge real classy 1950s motif everywhere cool trophies from that era i would say the polish home was a very sports athletic uh yes. um yeah. uh organization and so the during the pandemic they have hit in a, hit one of the very few um brunswick bowling lanes left in existence <laughs> And during the pandemic, it wasn't being used. So now it needs some repairs along with the roof and some other building repairs. So that is our cause for the, uh, that we selected the cause for the charity. And it's also going to host the event um, on April 8th in 2023. But the cool thing is you mentioned the banquet and that that's a extra fee. So if you want to just do the beard competition part, you don't have to do the banquet part. You can just hang yeah. out with the beard competition people and you don't, you don't get to eat though. So, yeah. right. But if you do compete, you get a discount on the, on the, on the, the dinner. Correct. Yeah. So there's several ways to participate. There's the original mustache growing contest. 
all the people you know in upstate New York who don't have a mustache, you think you can grow one, that you got four weeks, which is possible. It takes about two weeks to grow a good mustache. We want to see what turns up, and you can get a trophy for that. Or there's the traditional beard and mustache contest. You come and you pay $20 entry fee. Um, registration opens at 12 on that day. You can also register online at mustacheparlor.com slash Syracuse, or just go to mustacheparlor.com. And you, yeah. if you don't want to participate in the beard and mustache contest and you would still want to support our cause, you can join the banquet, which you can also get as a discounted price if you're in the contest. Cool. Um, the uh, banquet starts at 5 and food will be served at 6 p.m. And then about that time, the judges uh, will have everything totaled and we're going to have an award ceremony live on the stage at 7 p.m. And afterwards, we have to hang out in the secret Polish bar and celebrate with all of our cool bearded friends with all their trophies. Go ahead, Scott. What is on the menu? Do you know that? That part, I let the chef decide. They have an executive oh, chef. Man. I, I believe lasagna, and there must be kibasi. There'll be vegetarian options. Lasagna's not Polish? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it, is, it is when a Polish man makes it, though. Oh man, it, does I it can't have promise that pierogies in there, like pierogi lasagna. Yeah, <laughs> pierogi lasagna. Pierogi. I like pierogi this. with lasagna filling. Isn't that a ravioli in a way? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Not if you leave the pierogi guts in there too, and you just add to it, then it just then it's just a super pierogi. Well, that's what one time I was making the Mrs. T pierogies, and usually my family would always get together, and my grandmother's. And all my aunts would make 10,000 like handmade pierogies with the cheddar potato insides. And we would have a big feast. And so pierogies are like a real mainstay in our family and everything. And I was one night I had a hankering for pierogies, but I, as I started making them up, I didn't have onions. I didn't have sour cream. I didn't have all the accoutrements that go with a, presenting myself a wonderful dish of progies so i was like huh what if i put a little bit of tomato sauce on this like it is kind of like a ravioli in a way and i was surprised it was pretty good huh that's pretty cool yeah yeah so it was just spaghetti sauce with some potato inside well i mean it had spaghetti sauce on top of the pierogi so it was like eating giant size ravioli an, an italian pierogi it's pretty good yeah yeah. yeah, I like this. So as Alan says, a, per, a pierogi tacos, we need to come up with that whole idea. I'm sure we could get that going here. It's that is amazing. something that should have been invented a long time ago. Pierogi I tacos? love to put pierogies and tacos together. I, I, have you done this? No, no but it needs to be done right away. It may be close to an empanada, but we're not going to fry it. We'll put our Polish spin on it and just put a lot of butter and onions. And sausage. You can put yeah. Polish sausages in it with some with some hot sauce. We got Jerry here. We haven't seen Jerry, and he like disappeared off the planet years ago. Here, Jerry he won best in show in Alaska uh, on the March third or fourth or whatever it was up there. That was pretty cool. Wow, hey, Jerry, are are you are you coming to Syracuse on the 8th, April eighth? You should. You should definitely. Know, do that. Not many people can say they won the seventieth anniversary of a contest. That's a pretty legit prize, I. Yeah, Jerry loves doing stuff like that. He'll he'll uh, he'll probably get into it. So, oh. mm -hmm. go ahead. I was going to say all the judging is going to take place the usual standards for beard and mustache contests. So whoever wins these trophies will be proud that we just didn't give it to the our relatives or something like that. Speaking um, of judges, do you want to kind of uh, talk about a few of these judges? I think we we have everything for four of them. Yeah, I'm really impressed and proud of the people we attracted to help us judge this competition. That's that's an important part to me. I want to make sure this is legitimate prize. Yeah, um, I think these are a really good judges panel here. Do you, do you want to start it off or do you want me to do it? Go f go for it. Hey, look, All right. Um, so the first one we, we have uh, we wrangled down was. Was this this little character here, Bob <laughs> Baker? He uh, he's he's really taken off in the TikTok world. I think he's got over a million followers over there, and he does really just, good videos on making candlesticks. He is a great <laughs> candlestick maker. He's so good with wax. 
He uh, just coming to see this man's mustache is worth the entry fee alone. I agree. It's it's a glorious mustache, and and Bob will be there, and we'll probably get Bob and 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 Ron Wallach in the conversation. Just see what happens. Yeah, just to hear what that man's advice would be to have the facial hair prowess that he demonstrates. Just keep keep growing and and just be loud and proud about it. If a man like if a man with a mustache like that said that you know you got a three, I think that you would take it as a legitimate uh, legitimate score. There's no contesting. No, you're like all right, all right, Bob. I'll do better. Sorry. Yeah. Well, and if you're lucky, you'll probably end up being in one of his uh, TikTok videos because he's always filming stuff and he's becoming immensely he's popular on TikTok. Like, I think I think Bob is like legitimately on the cusp, but he's going to like outgrow the beard community and he's going to end up in like Hollywood movies. I yeah. genuinely think that like something's going to happen yeah. with Bob. He's too talented people, to not. People, people are probably going to hire me to make mustaches to replicate that. Guy. Or Bob. Yeah, actually, yeah. there you go. Maybe Bob needs a stunt mustache. Yeah, there you're, you're going to cast yeah. cast his mustache, and you're going to be able to make the Bob mustache and sell it on your yes. website. Check out these mustaches I just made for the opera. This one, the Phantom. To, this oh. one went to a Huli He. Look at that. Wow. That's. I wonder what Bob would say about this mustache if he'd give it a, a, a four. How he would how he would score it. A four out of what? Ten. Well, it, it, I think it's pretty even. Um, you know, seven point five. I, I would consider you would lose points if one side was longer than the other. Yeah, and that and one's the not density even, is pretty nice. It's not even growing from the face. I know. The, it, it also makes a great unibrow. I thought it was right a two pay. <clears throat> good, yeah, good merkin too. too. Don't forget about merkins. Everyone forgets about the merkin. Oh you're yeah, getting, you're you're getting about the Merkins. Scott, don't start talking about Merkins. Oh, sorry. We're still on judges. So, but the Whiskerinas can come for the realistic mustache category, and I'm sure Bob will be a terrific judge in fake mustaches as well Bob as the ones that grow on your face. For sure. Bob is okay, Elliot. I, I'm actually yeah. gonna. I'm gonna actually bring a couple of my handmade mustaches and entering it in myself maybe just to see what he has to say i'm curious i want them scored all right well our next judge that will also score your mustache also has a pretty good mustache but he also has a very glorious beard that sometimes he puts balls in it (laughs) matt mcclair of beard laws look at that he he loves putting all the Christmas ornaments in his beard. It's his favorite time of year, and he waits all year just to decorate his beard for Christmas. He loves Christmas so, so much. Matt McClear, Beard Laws. He uh, He's up there in that part of the country, so I, I, he was the first person I reached out to. I was like, hey, you, you live in New York. How far are you from Syracuse? And uh, I think he said like two and a half, three hours, so... He, uh, he's going to come down and, and be one of one, be and, one of the judges. And I, I should bring that up, too, because I forget to tell people we've organized so you can have a really good hotel deal if you decide to travel to come to Syracuse. Um, I recommend you use the Amtrak if you're in the surrounding cities because it's pretty cheap. There's a station not too far away. And um, there's several hotels on mustacheparlor.com slash Syracuse in the lodging section that have given us discounted deals around a hundred dollars a night, which you can't beat that. Syracuse is usually a, a city where hotels cost around 230 to $300. And um, wh- um, a couple of them have shuttle service from the, um, from the airport too. And they stay right down in downtown Syracuse, which downtown Syracuse has come back and alive. There's lots of breweries there that are going to be supporting the uh, event that they're, promoting um the contest syracuse is i feel like really coming is really excited behind this because it's their contest this is the 70th anniversary of a a tradition that my grandfather started and uh, um can't wait to honor his legacy and raise a good uh donation to bring back the uh syracuse polish home foundation's historic brunswick lanes because as i said when i came down there to open the competition it's time to reopen the lanes that's right. We must ball again. It's time. And that's to, what we're going to hopefully do. And lane persecution. 
Now I have a really great idea. Like if any one, <laughs> do you like that? It was a revenge of the nerds quote, but I, just, I adjusted it to fit this. Um, <laughs> so if I was a female, I think that I would do a whiskerina beard out of clamshells for bonus points. Uh, that would idea. get a, that would get a lot of bonus points. See, there you go. So if anyone's good idea out there, they're looking for one, you, you know, go. the first thing that the, uh, the board of directors at the Polish home, cause uh, we were wondering, I wonder if they're even going to let us have a beard contest there. And the first thing that they said, can ladies enter too? That's yeah. what they wanted to know. They didn't want to know if first. there was going to be like permits involved, who I was, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> they wanted to know if ladies could be in this contest too. So did they know about whiskerinas or were they specifically talking about bearded ladies? They had no idea about whiskerinas or, or bearded ladies. They just, uh, the two women mm. on the board of the directors said, oh man, this sounds like such, such a great, contest uh, we want to enter to someone and i explained the whiskerina thing and they got even that sealed the deal i think well that's impressive that is pretty cool <laughs> i didn't know that at all <laughs> like we don't care who you are can women be in this beard contest that's the basically the, the conversation went and they're like who are you why are you in my <laughs> living room uh, right. now the, uh, this, i guess we should bring up the next judge is going to be the president mm -hmm. emeritus of the syracuse polish sure home, that can be Mr. our next one. robert sobo Sobowski. um and he will be a uh an honorable judge and you you are related to this guy on some level we are cousins in some way in some way i like it that's what we my uncle says it. we did a genealogy test there seems to be um relatives that we are relative to i like this he likes red but hey, look at that guy's beard he's definitely related to me yeah y'all look just he said that was only a couple months he looks like Same. my dad you look oh. <laughs> this guy is awesome i sat down and talked he to him does. about polish history he's an expert in the uh community and um the history of poland um in regards to syracuse why there is a polish home he spent several years teaching in poland um and he's going to be cool there to hang out with live the judges are going to have so much fun hanging next to him. Way to go, Matt. He asked him some good questions. Yeah, Matt. All right. So we we've got one more judge that we can officially, officially announce. And then we've got another judge that's like 95% committed, but I don't have a picture of them, but we got one more that we do have a picture -y thing for, and this is going to connect back to you, Ron Wallach. This is a, uh, Ray Norcross, he he has wow. a podcast called Bearding Without Borders on mm. Thursday night. Never heard. And of uh, you're, uh, <laughs> I think you're going to be on a show coming up, right? Yes, at 7 p.m. on Thursday, and that's and this Thursday. That is an epic handlebar. It's right there. Boy, you better tell the him. Is that awesome. You make sure that you tell Ray that I I would put that mustache in an opera. Oh, jeez. It belongs on stage. You belong on stage, Ray Norcross. Ray like, Norcross, you belong on the stage. Do an opera. So what should he tell Ray Norcross? Well, I was just, you know, I was going to make a joke about how handsome the hosts from Talking Beards are compared mm -hmm. to him. Yeah, you should definitely bring that up, Ron, a couple times. Yeah. Like, you know, I was on this like, other show Tuesday, and those guys were way more handsome looking than you. I just... There's just something about those two guys on Tuesday. I, I don't know. You just need to make sure that Ron, that you know Ray knows that we're the the more handsome. Yeah, and they like talking about pierogies and mm -hmm. jellyfish and just all sorts of great things. I I, I was pretty envious. Uh, Aaron came to mustacheparlor.com today, and a couple times I was like, man, the mustache alone is epic. If only I had those genetics. You have any Polish genetics? Me? Yeah. I have no idea. He's from Kentucky. I'm from Kentucky. <laughs> there, we got Polish people in Kentucky. I don't know. Born and raised Western Kentucky. That's us. My he ancestors. was born in the back of a NASCAR that was hauling some uh, right. legal like, liquors across the county line. And then I was hey, like, "Hey, we did that, that, that in Poland too." NASCAR. It's got in my upstairs in my uh, father's bar. Uh, it originated with my grandmother. She made gin up there. Who made gin? Yeah, so there it, could be it, Polish and, down in Kentucky. And we, we talked <laughs> about that with um, with Rob, uh, the the historian, and and we looked it up. So the code back then was a juice bar. 
So if you sold juice in Prohibition, you probably were selling bathtub gin. Gin and juice. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> a song. You're out there just sipping on it. Probably yeah. cruise around in a 6'4 right, well, Impala. I think so. Because if, you, if you're in the Prohibition era, it's also the Depression, and you're dirt poor. Why would you spend your hard money on juice? Yeah, because it's drink. healthy. Yeah. Mm-mm, gin. <laughs> Gin's way more healthy. It, it tastes like gin. pine needles. Tastes like a bathtub, you idiot. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. A bathtub. Yeah, but it made you forget needles. about how poor you were. Or that you were how drinking sucky the bathtub depression was. juice. <laughs> bathtub juice. <laughs> Mm-mm, bathtub juice. Hmm. So, uh, so mustacheparlor.com. You can uh, go over there, like Ron said, and there's a, there's a link right there. It says beard contest, or you can go to mustacheparlor.com slash Syracuse. Is that what it, the the direct link was? That will take you directly there. That's the uh, information page. And yeah, then there's so, several different ways to to um, to be a part. If you do want to just uh, participate in the banquet alone and not compete, um, you actually get to pick your table seating. And uh, so that's why there's a different outlet for that. Um, also the, um, to enter into the beard contest, we take all your registration questions too. That's the article from 1953 down there on the bottom about the original contest. This is the 70th anniversary for Hank Wolick. There is in the middle with all of his buddies. Look at him. Look at all those mustache guys. Look at all those buddies. They all have mustaches. And if you go to the, uh, Hank Wolick website, a part of that, uh, and under the about section, you go to the Hank's Mustache Club. You can read the entire article, all about the acid rain, the youths with razors. Utes. 1953 was a scary time in Syracuse, New York. And there it is. There's and the this is the contest page. page. And you um, don't have to pre-register if you want to still come to the event. You we will do day of registration, but you could also pre-register online. Uh, but there's the registration information. There's the banquet information to buy your tickets. And then the next one over is the lodging information. So that shows, you know, the, the and these are all relatively close to the venue, I would assume. Ron. Yeah. Within a five minute drive, yeah. you could actually walk if you really wanted to. But it's probably going to be cold since there's a yeah. foot of snow on the ground now. And uh, parking's a little bit limited. So if you do plan on attending, uh, please take an Uber or carpool. There you go. I'd take the train already. Yeah. We're expecting a pretty big turnout. So just walk up and win the prize. There you go. Speaking of prizes, do, do we want to sh- a hint at what the first place trophies may look like? Or should we, should we wait? I think I, it's a good enticing thing. I mean, it's, it's going to be pretty good. So I mean, we, we have, we have the basis for first place. If yeah. you want to show them off. Well, should what should we do? I mean, it's a pretty. Big I think we should prize do it. Up the back. I no, think it's, it's, no, you, no. Should, you should. Well, because it's not the finished product, so that's yeah. that's going to be yeah. the fun part about it. But you can at least tell the story of what it is, and like, wow, this is yeah, where like, did where did these come from? I know we're not even really sure if we can say where they actually came from. But well, they came pretty, from they came from uh, the, they from came from something house. that was in the Caribbean at one they time. They were straight from the Caribbean, and probably pirates were involved. Billy it Ocean could have has been. nothing to do with these. They're, they're, but wouldn't it? That's the best part is when you walk out of there with this trophy, you can use it for a shield to protect yourself from all your envious friends. It's it's a it's and the acid words. rain. You know, there it's, you it's out of a. Out of a barrel, and it used to be a part of something else, but now it's going to be a super cool trophy. So yeah. come get these first place trophies; they are going to be substantial. Yeah. So if you you live in the Northeast, this is an easy trip for you to get to. Uh, Syracuse is a very um, an expensive airport to fly in and out of with the the budget airlines. Uh, Frontier flies there; has a lot of flights going in and out of um, the Syracuse Hancock Airport. Also, Spirit Airlines and, and Allegiant, um, as well as the big uh, brands. And like I said, the convenient way to get there from New York City, it's a six-hour train ride from on Amtrak. It puts you right um, in the middle of Syracuse. It's easy to get to because that's the home of the uh, state fair for um, upstate New York. 
Nice. And uh, you can get there from Buffalo. You can drive there from Buffalo and Rochester. And you can come as far as Boston or Detroit and uh, Chicago on the Amtrak. Uh, right. I did take the, the Amtrak from Syracuse to uh, Detroit. It was a pretty cool deal. I had the transfer, I believe, in Toledo. That's an awesome retro station. If you like train stations, it still had the same couch from like the 50s. It looked like something that Marilyn Monroe was in and then the bus stop movie. And it was probably... D- very dilapidated at this point did you, in time. Did you hear that, Dan C. Bearded? He was talking about coming from Detroit. That's your neck yeah, of the woods. Yeah, Dan C. Bearded, there's a train that there's goes train. from Detroit yeah. to yeah. Syracuse. You, and you, you want to look for it. the North Shore Limited Amtrak train. There you go, Dan You'll probably C. get a yeah. ticket for 20 or $30. And I've been on that train. The, the chairs are huge, much bigger than an airplane seat kind of like a lazy boy type of a thing you could sleep really well into it or they do have sleeper cars on this train too this is good that's better than so you can you can come to this beard contest just like you lived in europe you can put on your your best bearded suit put all your beard brushes and your amish amish products um a little amish amish bag there you go get it in a knapsack together come travel on the train after the contest go back on the train a nice good <laughs> hangover from the Polish home bar. There you go. All right. Well, you're so full of, of all the information, Ron. We we always appreciate you coming on the show. And um, uh yeah, man. Everybody and, go and, to mustacheparlor.com and, and go check it out. Go ahead, Rod. And one more thing. Uh, we have an administrator for the contest. His name is Harrison. Um yeah. he will be working at mustacheparlor.com uh Tuesday through Saturday. Um, from three to 7 PM. So if you want to call us, you got a question, is my beard going to qualify? You know, what if I don't have a beard? What if I want to sit next to, don't want to sit next to somebody at this beard contest? We can organize it all. Uh, The number is 407-479-0012. And, um, if you call in the afternoon, Harrison, the administrator of the contest will pick up, make sure you got your t-shirt. Anything that you're missing, it's his job to make sure you get it. There you go. Call and yell at Harrison. Go, Harrison. Gosh darn it. And we do. We have certificates and prizes that we're going to make him ship out out to people. There you go. And uh, we can't wait to hear what uh, people say when they receive them. Because mustacheparlor.com, like, I've had barely any sleep handling any of this stuff. But so I do want to thank all the people who have supported uh, mustacheparlor.com in the contest because I'm putting it right back into the uh, business and giving somebody a really cool job that you can talk to people about beards and mustaches all day. All right, Ron. Well, thank yeah. you for that. And, and uh, thank you, Aaron. Yeah. And, and yeah, everybody check out mustacheparlor.com and come to Syracuse, New York on April 8th to the Polish home. All right, Scott Sakura. I, I think that pretty well wraps up the night, right? I'm, I'm thinking so, but uh, yeah, we want to thank uh, everyone for watching the show. We we apologize for technical difficulties that had nothing to do with us. Um, but yeah, so if you guys, um, you know, maybe we should start migrating people. I mean, we already have a bunch of people watching currently from YouTube. I mean, I'm going to let you finish this up, Scott Sakura. But I have a technical difficulty of myself, and I've got to go. So okay, everybody have a great good. night. All right. Bye. Yeah. So everyone, uh, thank you very much for uh, checking the show out. And like I said, you know, uh, apologize for the technical difficulties. Um, you know, if you ever find that uh, Aaron D. Johnston broke it again, it has nothing to do with Aaron. Uh, but yeah, um, go over, check us out on YouTube, but seems to be the most stable of all the places to go check us out at. But uh we want to thank everyone for, like I said, I, I keep repeating myself, but uh, uh, checking the show out. Uh, thank you to Honest Amish. Uh, don't forget to go to honestamish.com and check out uh, all the different and wonderful products that they have for your beard and skin, such as soaps and balms and salves and lip lip uh, stuff, which is really good. They have some really great lip stuff. Uh, don't forget to use promo code talking beards to get 15%. Also don't forget to go to, uh, beardcalendar.com and, uh, check out all the latest beard competitions that are going on in the country and in the world. 
And uh, if you do have a competition coming up and you want to get it on the Beard Calendar, uh, when you go to thebeardcalendar.com, a little pop-up will pop up and you can enter the information for all that stuff. And that's about it for tonight. So we want to thank Aaron. We want to thank the Wallachs. We want to thank Taxi Phil uh, for all the great information they gave us tonight. Don't forget to go to talkingbeards.com and we're just going to end it there. So thank you, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Talking Beards. Make sure you go over to honestamish.com and use promo code TALKINGBEARDS to get 15% off your order. Don't forget to tune in live next Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern at talkingbeards.com.